Okay, I hereby call this. We have background. I hereby call this uh, City of Boardman Special Boardman Urban Renewal Agency meeting to order. We have everyone here, and that feedback is bad. <laughs> so everyone's here. We'll do the minutes of May 17th, 2022 budget meeting. I'd like to move to approve May 17th, 2022 budget meeting. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion? Having hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes of June 6, 2023, 20, special meeting. I'm going to go through the meetings of June 6, 2023, special meeting. Second. Okay, I got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Having hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> we'll go down to our pre prearranged presentations. Elaine Howard for the North Urban Renewal District. Good evening. I'm Elaine Howard from Elaine Howard Consulting. I worked on this project with uh, Nick Kaufman and I think of uh, various solutions that involve the financial data for this project. So tonight I will go over the role of the Urban Renewal Agency, the plan overview to talk about the boundary projects and financials, the process and next steps, and then we have a motion to consider. So the role of an urban renewal agency in the adoption of any new urban renewal plan is to review the proposed plan and decide to forward it through the public review process. And I'll go through the whole process with you on a slide further down. So the agency doesn't approve the plan or vote uh, that they adopt the plan. They just approve that it goes through the next steps of public review process. A plan is adopted by the agency meeting tonight, a presentation to the county. The county does not get to vote for adoption of the plan, but you are required by statute to give them a presentation. It goes to the planning commission for review of conformance to the comprehensive plan. And then it goes to a city of council meeting that has to be a hearing that's noticed citywide and a vote on a non-emergency ordinance. A non-emergency ordinance has 30 days before it goes into effect. And in that time period, if there is a petition and enough signatures collected, it can be put to referendum. So that's why it's a non-emergency ordinance to allow people if they oppose the action to put it up for a citywide vote. Otherwise, there isn't a citywide vote for a new urban renewal area. The city council can do that on their own. This is the proposed boundary of the area. And you can see it's all north of the I-84 freeway. You can also see that a lot of the parcels are um, open and not developed. So there's a lot of vacant property. There's also a lot of new construction happening right now within the area. But you can also see that the transportation network within the area is not fully connected. Given all of the new residential units that are planned to go within the area and the new SAGE Center, there is going to be a lot more traffic within that area and the transportation network needs to be developed to be able to accommodate that traffic and to help support other new development to come into the area hopefully commercial development that will support all of that residential development that's happening now. The state of Oregon has requirements for the total amount of acreage and or assessed value that can be in an urban renewal area. For a city your size, that limit is 25%. If this area is adopted, the acreage would be at 17.87%. So you would still have the ability to add some additional acreage into urban renewal if you wanted to in the future. The total assessed value is very low. It's 2.37%. That number will change once all that development that's occurring right now 
goes on the property tax roll and becomes what's on row E there, excess value. Excess value is that new development that happens once an urban renewal area is um, adopted and then new development happens within that area, that's called the excess value. So that will impact that total percent of city assessed value number because the way that is calculated is you take the total assessed value of the entire city, then you subtract that excess value or the increased value within the area, and then you divide your um, those base values by that number, and that gets you your percent of assessed value. I believe it will still be low enough that if you in the future you wanted to add another urban renewal area, a small area, you would be able to do that both for acreage and assessed value. The projects have uh, changed a little bit since I talked to you um, a little over a month ago. We had uh, Anderson Perry come in and look at the project list and give us cost estimates for the projects. <laughs> and to look at the different transportation documents and to advise what transportation needs there were within the area. So uh, there's another map that will come up, a map in a minute that will go through the locations of all of those projects. So the extended Northeast Boardman Avenue was a project we talked about before. Improved Northeast Front Street, we talked about before. The alley from 2nd Avenue to Northeast 3rd Street. 2nd Avenue, Northeast to Columbia Avenue. I think that is a new segment. Columbia Avenue, Northeast to Boardman Avenue. Northeast is a new segment. segment. And then North Main Street and Boardman Avenue intersection improvements and then other transportation improvements as necessary. And then the ability to provide economic development incentives. What economic development incentives means is if you are trying to get a new business to come to the area and they say, we would love to come to the area, but our cash flow on this particular project um, does not meet our development needs, you can say, well, how about if we do X and then you would be able to develop in our community. It's usually used for businesses that you want to come to your city. So something that you think is an important service to your residents or something that you don't have that you want to have or something that will help facilitate other economic development in your community. So that's used on a case by case basis. And that would be something that would have to be approved by the agency when you did those um, specific incentives. Mike from Anderson Perry provided us these updated cost estimates for the different projects. So you can see those for all of the projects that we went through. Um, other traffic improvements, we allocated uh, $2 million over. This is looked at as a 20-year plan. And then the economic development toolkit, so those incentives, is also $2 million. So the total amount of cost of projects in today's dollars is about $11 million. <laughs> those uh, projects, when we... We're talking with Mike, he asked us to use an inflation factor of 7% when we look at the cost of projects over time, so over the 20-year time frame. We normally use a 3% inflation factor. We know right now 3% is way below what the industry standard is hitting at. It does not hurt you to use 11% within your documents. It just means that if inflation is not as high as that over time, you will be able to either add other projects to be able to do, or you can shut the uh, area down earlier if you completed all the projects and thought everything was done. So it just is a, a conservative approach to the urban renewal plan. It does not hurt you in any way. And as long as they are your engineers, I think it's wise to go with the recommendation that they have for you. So given the a little under $11 million in total project costs, I'm going to go to this and then go back to the project locations. Um, Nick Popinuck and Ali Danko from the Tiberi Solutions figured backwards to, given that 7% inflation factor, 
um, what the maximum indebtedness would have to be for this area and how long it might be before we reach that maximum indebtedness. So given the inflation factor and given that we didn't consider long-term debt because typically Boardman has not gone to long-term bonds or uh, those kinds of things, um, the maximum indebtedness amount is $27 million. The capacity in today's dollars is that 11 million, which matches the engineer's cost. So what that means again is if you're able to do those projects more quickly than waiting over time for money to come in from a renewal. So if there are city funds that you're able to access and pay back through an intergovernmental agreement, then you would be able to do these projects more quickly and you wouldn't need that full $27 million to be able to allocate to those projects. And again, at that time, your option would be to close the district down and say, you know, we, we did what we wanted and let's give all of this assessed value back to the different taxing districts or to identify other projects within the plan. And you may add other projects to the, to the plan through a minor amendment of the urban renewal agency. So it's not a difficult thing to do to add projects to the plan. These are the project locations. Um, and so you can see the, I think the one that we didn't talk about before is this connection here. Um, so we, we talked about that avenue here. We talked about Sydney Boardman Avenue. Um, I, I think, I'm not sure if we talked about that connection. And then we also have the um, traffic improvements. So that just shows you where those projects are. That helps come, oh, the improvements, I'm sorry, are down here where I have a nice big arrow. Um, it shows you the location of those projects and how those projects help form a more complete network within the area providing curbs, gutters, sidewalks on those major roads so that people can actually walk through the area safely um, and provide more access to the area for anybody who lives there. And hopefully there will be new commercial development that will occur there along front um, to help service all of that new residential that's coming within the area. As you know, the impact of urban renewal is on the other taxing districts. It's not on any property pet owners. Your property owner, you do not pay increased taxes due to urban renewal. This shows those projected costs through 20 years. So Morrill County and the city of Boardman are the highest impacted. Morrill County is about $6,765,000 of um, tax increment that they would be foregoing to allow you to do projects within the area. And the city of Boardman is a little under 7 million, 6 million, 900,000. That is understanding that some of that residential, a lot of that residential is happening now. You are able to collect that increment into your urban renewal area because it has not yet gone on the property tax roll. So you will get that increment plus any new development, any of that new commercial development. So they've, there's been talk about a couple of hotels. There's been talk about uh, more businesses. Any of that increment will come to the urban renewal agency. Most of your other taxing districts are a larger area. So the impacts uh, to them overall on their budgets and the total impacts are much smaller. Um, it is a, a relatively short urban renewal area, 20 years, and, and if you just stick with the projects that you have, <coughs> it's my belief it'll be much shorter than that, just given the financial assumptions that we talked about. Um, if, if, the, if, if, interest, if, if the 7% um, goes lower, then you'll be able to do your projects more quickly and that will save you money and you, you wouldn't have to go the full 20 years. These are the general government taxing districts. These are the education taxing districts. Education taxing districts with urban renewal are impacted differently because they are funded through the state, through local uh, state funding pools. So uh, 
people who work for the school district probably understand that, but the school district is funded through the state school fund on a per pupil basis. They do not get less funding at that school district due to any urban renewal within your city. There's just less funds from permanent rate tax levies that go into the state school fund. The legislature has the ability to backfill that state school fund with other funding sources. So they are obligated every time they meet to set what that per pupil funding number is and then to develop a pool of funds from which that money is allocated back out to all of the school districts. That is the same for the education uh, service district and the community colleges are similar, but they have a different fund and that fund is funded also on the state level and is given back out through classes taken, number of classes taken. So urban renewal is an indirect impact on education. It doesn't have a direct impact, meaning that your districts get any less money because of urban renewal, either within your own community or anywhere else within the state. This is the proposed schedule. It is a concentrated, compressed schedule because we are trying to get this adopted before the assessor certifies the new tax rule in early October. That will allow you to gain all of the increment off of the new development within this area that has not yet gone on the tax roll. So we have an agency meeting tonight. If you so direct, the city will send out what's called consult and confer letters to all the taxing districts by this Friday. That just notifies them that the city is considering establishing an urban renewal area, highlights to them what the impacts would be, but also then highlights what the improvements will be within that area and why you're wanting to do it. The planning commission is scheduled next week on July 19th to um, consider the conformance to the Boardman Comprehensive Plan. We will schedule a county briefing in either July or August. We have a city council hearing scheduled for your first meeting in August, uh, your meeting in August, August 1st and then a vote on September 5th. That is the Tuesday after Labor Day. So we, we know that that may not be the best timing. However, because it's a non-emergency ordinance, if you vote on September 5th, this doesn't go into effect until October 5th. And in con conversations with the tax assessor, he plans on certifying the new tax rule um, probably that next Monday, which is October 9th. So if your desire is to um, have this in place before the new tax rule is certified, and that is beneficial to the urban renewal area, then you need to meet a schedule that is very close to what the schedule is. Um, this is a suggested motion. I think there's one that's a little... Uh, shorter than your packets, and then we can just let this sit here while you ask any questions that we may have. So the 27 million is the total that would be lost or paid? It's a total that <clears throat> if this goes 20 years and if all the development happens as projected, is the total amount of money that the other taxing districts would forego due to your investments within the community for the transportation network and economic development. Isn't it also the maximum that we can become indebted? That's right. To do those projects. So we want to make it, we want to build fast. If you build fast, you get to do more. Right. If you have a fund. Right. Well, 11 million, we have 14 million. Correct? We have 14 million somewhere around there. So you can't put all the those projects up. Oh, I thought that's what you wanted the 14 million for was for those projects. <laughs> There's several projects oh, that okay. have to be paid for. <laughs> so you're not planning on doing this all in two years? I, I don't foresee us being able to get it all done in two years. Okay. Um, my, she said, I, 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 yeah, I, you, it would probably take that long just to engineer those projects. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, and ideally you would would stagger them. Um, the most opportune time to bid a road project is in the spring or any project for that matter. And so there's only a certain number of qualified contractors that, that could do this work. And so, um, you know, that's not that's not even taking into consideration the other projects that are going on in the area. So ideally you would spread this out over, you know, five years and do a project a year. Uh, and then you just take advantage of the opportunity that is the bid, you know, the opportunity bid time in spring. And then you also attract your your most qualified contractors to these projects. So you're getting uh, best bid, bid prices. I, I, I could stand to be corrected, but I also think we have to get the money for it first, too. So there's we have to slowly acquire the money in the urban renewal agency in order to make those expenditures. We could. You, you could do an intergovernmental agreement. So if the city had a pot of money mm -hmm. that was um, <coughs> reserved and they wanted to allocate any of that money, there could be an agreement between the city and the urban renewal agency so that the city up front pays for the project, the agency pays the city back when that money comes in. You will know as soon as all of that development that is going on now comes on the property tax rolls, what amount of, and within two years, you'll know that, what amount of money you will have to be able to pay back the city annually. Um, so it would be like a loan where there would be payments back from the agency to the city on an annual basis. You could do that. You don't have to, but it does accelerate your ability to do the project. But we at least have the money to start doing some of this. Yeah, that's what is good. Then. Because if we wanted to just go build a road, a two million dollar road down the uh, in the renewal urban or in the urban renewal agency, we could do that, couldn't we? You could do that now. You could not get repaid by the urban renewal area until it's formed. Once it's formed and you set up an agreement between the two, <clears throat> then you could get that uh, paid back. But then the expenditures that you have made prior to the formation of an urban renewal area, other than working on the plan itself, are not reimbursable. Okay, explain this to me. Why do I care if it gets reimbursed? If it's a city street and I just want to get it paved, only that you could use that money for your city street elsewhere in your city if you can pay for that one with urban renewal and you're only using X percent of the city money and the rest of the money comes from the other tax gotcha. districts. So, so the whole idea is to get that money back so that we can reinvest it in other projects. So, um, yeah, that, that would be the, that. This is basically the only way you're going to be able to invest your money and get your money back so that you can move on to other projects. It'll okay. just be slow getting it back. It, it, could, it, it, it could be slow, but Dep it, depending it, on it, what builds and tells. Absolutely. And, and when we're working with some of these developers, <clears throat> um, having this as a, 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 a tool really helps because we can help them develop their, their and get the money out of urban renewal to help to invest in that development. So that doesn't mean it always happens, but it does happen. Well, and then when they go on the tax rolls, then they're paying at a higher rate us so that we can pay back our what we've done for them so it's kind of like it makes makes us look like we're really helping out when we're helping each other yeah do you anticipate uh any hiccups from the other taxing districts karen's done this a couple times so um, it, it's 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 educating. Uh, I think uh, the big thing is educating those other districts. Uh, the fact that they're still going to get their tax revenue is just going to be capped at what mm -hmm. it is currently. <laughs> and then once the urban renewal is done, then it goes up to the the current the current, rate. which could definitely benefit them even more. I I I, I can't imagine why it would. Yeah, there's used last time there was a figure in our about how long it would take each district to get back the amount they moved for gone. And some of those little districts, it takes them like one year and uh -huh. they get it back. Some of the bigger ones, uh, 
fire districts are noted statewide to be against urban renewal. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just have, and you don't have to have every, every district. And correct me when I'm telling them wrong. No, but I don't have to have every district go in favor. You just have to notify them. Yeah, I just have to notify them. Gotcha. I think, personally, I'm thinking that I might get a lot of from the Dick Health District. That's I'm, what I'm thinking just... that that, I've never, before we had no problem with Health District, but that's not exactly true right now. So, right. But they should. This is a win win for everybody if they can understand the concept. Because the city, we don't have the finance and that, and to go down and do these things without some way to keep our money coming in. I mean, you know, so. Is there a number of the. Is there a specific number that have to agree or disagree to? No, the city council has the authority to adopt an urban plan on their own without the, the taxing districts don't need to agree or disagree. They get to give their opinion. On they get they... to give their opinion. They, uh, they are allowed a 45 day written period. So if they want to ask you to make any changes and do that in writing, you have to respond to that in the ordinance that you consider when you adopt the plan. And I've had taxing districts do that sometimes. They'll either want a specific project that might assist them or you know, that they'll want something done. And so they'll submit that in writing and then the city council considers that and decides what, what to do. So I can tell you that I've talked to um, some representation of some of the districts told them, that, you know, this is what we're looking at. They're not overly excited, but at the same token, they see the value and what it would bring. So it's it's having that engagement, that conversation, and, and you've got somebody who has done these a couple of times who I would strongly recommend be uh, involved in those conversations with those districts um, because she's she's done it. She's worked with it, uh, Elaine for uh, two projects now, I think. So um, it can be done. Uh, I, it's it's in the best interest of, of development in the city that we do this so that we can try to recoup those funds and continue to uh, have uh, money to uh, do keep other our, projects, keep up our infrastructure, but also get those projects done so that we can get some of these uh, companies here and, and developers here. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. The road quick question. Um, as we complete projects and then say we decide to close an urban renewal district, when we close that, I believe I know the answer, but then does that free up the percentage mm -hmm. we have? It's a rotating, yep. it's not weird. Yep. Okay. So your oldest district is your downtown one. And when whenever that close closes, it frees up both acreage and assess value for any future consideration. Thank you. Any other ones? Questions? Yes. On the timeline, you were talking about a public hearing, and then in September, the, the vote. Is that an ordinance or a resolution? Ordinance? It is an ordinance. So we would do then the first reading at the time of the hearing, and then the second reading decision in the September meeting. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So we'll move on to our public comment for the urban renewal. Is there anybody? Well, we have some new people. Anybody have any questions? How about online? Anybody online have any questions for what we were talking about today? Okay, having hearing nothing, we'll go to our other business which will be discussing whether or not we want to form the North Urban Renewal District. Should we move this one forward? Well, that's what this is right here. Isn't that the other business? I don't know. I don't have that paper. Or it's very convincing. You all should have a yellow paper that have. We are at the part where we, that's where we're at on the agenda, right? So the guys, this is how we're reading. Oh. This is how we're 
We just need to consider the motion. Right, that's what we are at that on for the agenda part. So I move to board the North Boardman Urban Renewal Plan through the formal public review process, including sending it to the taxing districts for planning commission review of the conformance to the comprehensive plan to Moa County for a briefing and to the city council for a public hearing and vote. Okay, yeah, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And this meeting is now adjourned.